Welcome back to Security Simplified. Last time, we talked about the, a security vulnerability named iDorn. To recap, iDoors happen when access control is not properly implemented and when the references to data objects like a file or a database entry are predictable. This causes users to be able to access other users' information and is a serious vulnerability that can lead to data leaks. The reason why iDoors are so common is that they are pretty hard to detect. So the best way to prevent iDoors is to carefully implement protections during the development process. For an iDoor vulnerability to be exploitable, two things need to be true. A direct object reference to the data objects and a lack of access control. So to prevent iDoors, applications can avoid direct object references and implement detailed access control for each application resource. For example, applications can map user-provided IDs to another object ID on the back end based on the user's session. The application can also use an unpredictable hash or random string to refer to objects instead of using a simple numerical ID. This makes it more difficult or even impossible to enumerate real data IDs and harvest the sensitive data of others. But the root cause of iDoor vulnerabilities is missing access control. If the application were to check the user's permissions before accessing resources, direct object references wouldn't be such a problem after all. So the second thing you should do to prevent iDoors is to implement robust access control. For each piece of application resource that should be restricted, you should verify that the user is indeed authorized to access it. So is there a way to find iDoor vulnerabilities that are already out there haunting your application? Automatic vulnerabilities are pretty bad at finding iDoors because they cannot recognize what resources requires which kind of protection. So the best way to discover existing iDoors is through a source code review to see all if all of the direct or indirect object references in your application are protected by proper access control. And finally, manual testing is also an effective way to test for iDorn. When manual testing, you should create two different accounts and see if you can access the account info of the first account using the second account. And remember that iDoors can appear in URL parameters, form field parameters, file path, headers, and cookies, and so on. So you can check for iDoors by capturing and inspecting each request that should be restricted, alter these fields that refers to resources, and try to hack one of your accounts from the other. And that's it for today's security lesson. Thanks for watching.